Most of us learn what we have been taught in our pre-doctoral and postdoctoral programs, and we take what we learn for granted. In fact, our teachers themselves were taught by others. So this is really an ongoing cycle that goes back for a while, and that's really why change is really slow process, and it requires breaking down some of our own personal dogmas and then teaching that to others. Even though the crown down technique was first described by Montgomery back in the 1980s, now most people still access a tooth and then try to rush to the apex with a hand file. This is where most of the procedural accidents like ledging or blockage happens. And the reason why most of our files have a difficult time reaching the apex isn't really because our canals are calcified canals calcify from the top down. It's actually because the taper of our hand files, albeit only an O2 taper, is still greater than the natural taper of a small canal like a mesiobuccal root of a maxillary molar. So imagine, for example, that if you are using a file that is a 1002 hand file, but the natural dimension of a mesiobuccal root of a maxillary molar is 2001, uh, and again, this is because canals calcify from the top down rather than the apex, and the apex is rarely calcified. As a result of this disparity, our files tend to hang up on the side taper of the file rather than at their tip. But since we're only holding these files at the handle, we really can't discern the exact area of the contact, and we tend to assume that it is being actually held up at the tip of the file rather than the sides. And this is why a crown down technique makes sense, why it's important as it first removes some of those coronal impediments that engage the file's taper. And by removing those coronal impediments, what we do is we allow the hand file's tip to become free in order to navigate apically unimpeded. Now, the best way to demonstrate this is with a simple demonstration using a clear tooth. Let's use a maxillary molar's mesiobuccal root, for example. If I take a number 10 hand file to its available length by simply pushing it and not really working it to where it comes to a stop, and then take the file out and use an orifice opener with three light strokes to open up the top part of the canal, and I could even use maybe a different larger taper file with a single stroke in the mid root shaping area uh, to open up in the mid root portion, as long as it's still short of this available length, then the very same original 10 file that was not able to go down will then advance longer in the canal, extending my effective available length. Now, this proves that the number 10 file had originally stopped at available length, not because it was engaging at the tip of the file, but because it was engaging on its sides. And this simple demonstration shows the importance of crown down technique in more calcified canals. And it also shows a concept that I find axiomatic when you're trying to instrument these kinds of canals. And that concept is do not rush to the apex. Now, I say this uh, to all of our postdoc residents at our school because it's our natural tendency to rush to uh, to achieve our challenges, to overcome our challenges as quickly as possible. But by spending just a little time early on creating a little bit of coronal flare and then removing those coronal restrictions to allow our file tips to advance naturally in the canal, we can save time in the long run by getting down while reducing the odds of some of these procedural accidents that tend to occur. And this is the essence of hybridization of tapers. Now, you just have to make sure that your crown down strokes are minimized to one to three strokes and that they are passive, meaning that you're not really pushing the orifice opener or the mid root shaping file beyond their passive cutting points and make also a conscious effort to stay short of the available length. The, the goal is to use the hand files to scout the canal to available length and then use the night eyes to remove the coronal restrictions to available length and then advance the hand file again to its new available length. This is really a cycle that continues until length is achieved and then therefore with larger files until all instrumentation is complete. This is the essence of a concept I described several years ago in a video that you can find here. 
Well, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, make sure to take your time, do some coronal enlargement, and by all means, do not rush to the apex.